I'm going to break it up, barbecuing. Right, I don't know what's happened, but I'm pretty proud of my beef. Yeah. I'm pretty proud of my we, – we've got a Angus Pure grass-fed yep. uh, beast, and I, I think it's one of the – best quality meat products in the world yeah uh, and i'm yeah. people say oh it might be a bit biased i i am a little bit biased so you might want to talk talk me out of this but that product is you can cut it you nude it with the bulk you get rid of the little bit of the i don't know what's called the alas the uh the, the some of the sinew or so some yeah, of the silver yeah, skin so yeah get yeah. rid of get rid of that and then cut nice you know inch and a half steaks yeah. and they're small i feel it yeah i'll say to anyone that anyone is listening, that that is the best product you'll get in any restaurant anywhere in the world yep. to the stage where dad thinks he's the best steak cook on the planet. <laughs> and I said to dad, it's the product, mate. It's not the cook. It's always the product. But but what it, what's your interpretation on that product? You know yeah. that product? I think yeah. that is your product. It is. It's something, again, if I go back to Frank Baccaro and myself, saying that we've championed and even when I was a young livestock buyer, but there is. So I speak this with a, a you know, a bit of knowledge about it, I guess. But uh, and I'm and I'm not biased when I say it's the best eating product. It's a different flavour. Now, surprisingly, it's not for everyone. But the trend we're seeing globally. I'll give you a really good example. Was selling grass-fed beef to the US. It's like trying to sell sand to the Saudis. Okay, <laughs> you've got this wonderful beef product and hey, the beef eaters almost of the world yep. but a lot of theirs is corn fed and they used to grass fed being something an old cow or cheap or nasty and it hasn't got a great reputation well we started how, how how's that be like grass is what's on the ground it well, wasn't corn well, like well, this is the thing interesting thing because there's grass and grass and even in australia and not to <laughs> not to um you know, start state wars or that we're having enough of them at the moment. <laughs> but, you know, the protein, what we have here, if we can be parochial for a second in South Australia and then Southeast, you know, is what we've got this competitive advantage, what God gave us is the amazing pastures full of high protein, higher rainfall, and not too dissimilar to the Western districts of Victoria or the Gippsland parts of Southwest. And so we're not, you almost don't need a market because it's not, it is natural. It's not a slogan or a word. So, You've got, and the farmers over the last 20 or 30 years, the work they've done genetically with the animals, you know, to ensure the way the animal husbandry, the way the animals are treated, the way the animals are harvested and processed, it's, um, you know, you guarantee this eating quality, but the cleanliness, and it really is, no antibiotics, no hormones. Uh, you know, it sounds like a marketer's dream, but it's just actually pretty easy. It is, it's the product. And to sell that and... We um, started a program over a decade ago in the US and you're trying to convince, you know, corn fed um, people and it's amazing. We did blind tests with some of the oldest meat cutters in the game, right? And time and time again, they picked the Angus Pure and they were horrified to realise it wasn't American corn fed beef. <laughs> but we've seen that around the world um, in Asia, uh, you know, this which have been typically grain fed or Wagyu and all these different sorts of things, big career. But this real understanding of the younger generation, the health benefits of of lean um, beef and protein. I say, so I, I don't. It's becoming a bad thing, but I, I've been rocking up bringing my own meat. Like I, I'm so proud of our meat that if people got a barbecue, nah, I don't want your shit meat from. You I know, know the feeling. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But do you do this? Yeah, well, absolutely. You, you do- <laughs> and what's more. To, to, not to undermine you when you're talking about uh, cooking uh, to, to the point where I'll probably, if I'm at someone's house, I'll cook the barbecue <laughs> because I've been there before when no and, uh, some of you know, good mate of mine, Simon Brown, I brought up this beautiful cube roll or scotch fillet and away he went out. And these things, they looked like this table, you know, they were singed. It was like Ash Wednesday. Um, so whilst you can have the best product or the best lamb, but yeah, you, you can ruin it by cooking. And, and that's one of the things today that I'm, I'm excited about is whether it's the cooking shows, but people, um, and you see now in some of these situations with lockdown, um, the big shift to online, which was already happening, but people cooking at home now, and these are things because there's a generation there where, you know, fast food and, and things sort of really evolve. Well, replace that now with convenience probably more so than yep. than fast food people yep. are wanting to cook but they don't have the time to go and spend two or three hours to cook the sunday roast but if you can give them that same eating experience but in a more convenient timely fashion 
uh, I think uh, you know, you know, you're on a winner, and that's where I see a lot of the trends moving.